about how I was always very hesitant about going the world of VAs. And I'd heard horror stories and just turnover of not good fit and people not executing or performing or having to micromanage and all these things. So for probably a good 18 months, I just completely pushed away the idea of going with this virtual staff until I had a conversation with my man, Scott. Into businesses, I realized that we were really doing a disservice. You said, you know, all the horror stories. Same thing. I started interviewing people who had told me that VAs were a waste of time. To me, it seemed like a great solution. And every corner I turned, people would tell me, no, they disappear. They don't work well. They start out strong and keep asking for more money. There's power issues. There's internet issues. There's, you know, I don't trust them. The work quality is really horrible. Like, am I resonating with anybody right now? Right, yeah. <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Big Dog Podcast. They say I get to be the big dog still, so I'm Josh. I got my boy Logan Wilson here. My son, how you doing, son? Good, how are you? Good, I like the hat. God is good. Thanks. Every day, all day. And then I've got the man of the hour, the myth, the legend, the king of, I would say VA, but really it's VP. I've got Scott Ramage in the house and he's going to help us with all kinds of great stuff today. What's up, Scott? What's up, gentlemen? Uh, Logan digging the hat. And I, before we started, I told Josh, who's got the all black stitching on the black hat that I copied him because I have my new logo, all black stitching on the black hat. It's a dope look, man. It is a good look and it looks yeah. great on you. And it looks really great with that backdrop, um, <laughs> which I'm totally digging. I need to change that up. I feel like I'm in the tunnel effect right now in my in my office. The studio's next door, um, but we got to get a little fancier so we can do these from the studio, um, not just the, the the solo session. So, Scott, thanks for joining us, baby. How's Texas? Is it warming up? It's warming up now. It's rainy, but you know we have these weird we have a we have two week winters. So, just going through that. I like winter, but. It, not the way that Texas does it. So <laughs> well, they're not necessarily equipped to run with that when it, when it happens. So it's not a, in any a sense. Bit of a mess. I think I started coming out there in 2020 and my timing of my trips have always been in alignment with that one week a year where everything shuts down. And had we not had a little coffee shop at the Renaissance Hotel with uh, a little cheese board and fruit and Red Bull, I, I may not have made it through the week because there was nothing <laughs> open. Y'all shut down for real. And it was the craziest thing I've ever experienced in my life. We, I think we had like 0.01 inches of snow last week. I think it was last week. Maybe it was the week before. And they literally shut down schools. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's wild. I, I was like the city that I love to go to because you can get anything you want. There's a dozen within 10 miles and anything you can imagine, anything your heart desires, you can find in DFW and multiple times over. Not if it's cold, <laughs> not if it's cold it is cold. You might as well be in the most barren parts of Alaska. I mean, it is. It is a trip. It is it's a trip. kind of embarrassing. It's all right, though. I mean, hey, we can't be great at everything, right? No, like, I guess not. That area is too awesome. It, it has to have some something that's subpar. But look, guys, so Scott, you've heard me mention on the show before. Uh, Scott is my plug when I need staffing assistance. And, you know, I've, I've talked on the show about how I was always very hesitant about going the world of VAs and I'd heard horror stories and just turnover after turnover after turnover and not good fits and, and people not, you know, executing or performing or having to micromanage and all these things. So for probably a good 18 months, I just completely pushed away the idea of going with this virtual staff until I had a conversation with my man, Scott. And it happened because I was looking for help with post-production of the podcast. And so about halfway through that conversation, we end up on the VA conversation. And next thing you know, we're coming up on a year working together now. And That's I think right. we've placed a, coming up on a dozen. Yep. 
across our brands. And it, it's been absolutely tremendous. And I was like, I need to get Scott on here to talk about what they do, how they do it differently, because there's a ton of VA companies out there. And with your brand shift over the last couple of months, I think it speaks volumes to where you guys are going. So now that I've kind of given the setup, let's go back a couple of steps. Tell, tell my listeners, who are you, Scott? Like, who, who are you? How did you end up here and doing what you're doing? Yeah, I I want to I want to go back to the part where that first conversation we had. It was it went from 0 to a million miles per hour really fast and I got off the phone and I remember walking into my wife's office which was on the other side of the house and I said, I just had this cool call with this guy Josh and it was just it was awesome. That's all I had to say. I'm like, we, we just really, we clicked. He's going to start with some podcasting stuff, but I talked about your business. We're a fan of Off Leash Canine. Our dog is a representation of that. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. <laughs> uh, so yeah, my, uh, you know, my business is higher VP and we did do a brand shift just recently because as I started to engage more and more and more in placing what I would call experienced higher level virtual professionals or virtual assistants, as everybody knows it, into businesses, I realized that we were really doing a disservice to anybody who's thinking about VAs. And you said something a little earlier, you said, you know, all the horror stories, same thing, exact same thing. And so when I first got interested in hiring a VA, someone said, hire a VA. And I did. My very first VA was a VA. She was an assistant. I actually hired her. She had zero experience working virtually. Okay. And so, and she still works for me. She's in the Philippines. She's going to graduate school in Miami next year. Nice. Um, yeah, yeah. Huge opportunities for people that are really striving to build a better life for themselves. But I started interviewing people who had told me that VAs were a waste of time because it's, to me, it seemed like a great solution. And every corner I turned, people would tell me, no, they disappear. They don't work well. They start out strong and keep asking for more money. Uh, there's power issues. There's internet issues. There's, you know, I don't trust them. The work quality is really horrible. Like, am I resonating with anybody right now? Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and so I went down that wormhole and I built an entire agency off of virtual assistance in the Philippines and I've been doing that for years. And as I started doing these higher level placements, I realized that these are professionals. These are virtual people willing to work virtually. We're hiring people that are experienced, that have skill sets in what our clients need. So we go and we we recruit specifically for our clients' needs. And so, you know, we, we're placing from engineers down to assistants to media buyers and video editors and social media managers uh, across the board. And so we made that brand shift and it's been really well received. And it's quite the interesting thing to have conversations with people because I have to explain what a virtual professional is before yeah. we get too far because because it's it can throw them off. They're like, well, I don't need a vice president. <laughs> I'm like, well, we're talking about a different kind of VP. So right. it's, been a, it's been a wild ride. It's been awesome. Yeah. And that's one thing that I think I fully underestimated the capabilities of not not trying to to downplay the ability but of who we would have access to and every one of our team they're not assistants like they are pros and they've got great backgrounds everyone that you've connected us with now whether it ends up being long-term fit or not hey that's like any hire right like to, to see but i was shocked at the quality of the candidates that you put in front of me i love that process for the record like it's amazing uh, so what they do guys is i get on the phone with scott and his team and i talk about i need two to three people this is the the role this is what's going on. This is what a schedule looks like. These are the skill sets, the characteristics, the personality traits, you know, that we need. And then typically 10 to 21 days later, depending on the role, I get an email with a presentation and it's, hey, Josh, here's your candidates. If you're interested in talking to any of them, you know, click this link, schedule a time that works for you and they line it all up. So I go, I schedule my interview time with the candidates that they submitted to me that I choose to talk to. They show up, we go through. Now they've already done one or two interviews also with oh, yeah. these people guys, you know, maybe more going through the vetting process, making sure they are a good fit, particularly like with us and my team, they've got a pretty good idea of who we are and what we're about now. 
you know, after working together so much. And so I think it might even from a, a flavor profile, for lack of a better term, you've got a pretty good idea of a personality that fits with us and, and things like that. So it's it's really tremendous. And man, we've got we've hired folks through you. We have social media manager and uh, content creator, blog writer. We have a full time video editor. We have someone who <laughs> Zoe, that's my dude. He was my my first guy personally yeah, I hired. He's awesome. And he was hired just for podcast. But he's just he is down for anything. And anything, any project, any side thing we have, no problem, sir, Mr. Josh, I'm on it. And he just runs with it. (laughs) And I love this guy so much. I don't know if I've ever met a kinder individual, you know, in my life um, than him. And so now on our admin side, we do have a couple people, you know, but they're they're managing accounts. These aren't assistants. They, They are managing accounts. They're communicating with clients. They're communicating with vendors and partners across the board. And then the creme de creme, the, the top of the top, the best placement you've ever done for me is Nika. Yeah. And yeah. this is my executive, excuse me, I'm tearing up talking about it. This is my executive assistant and we're three and a half weeks in. And man, let me tell you, it, she's, she is a pro. Her title is what her title is. But she is an absolute beast. And you found the right person for my personality, background, skill set. You vetted the process where you're like, uh, Josh is a little bit all over the place. We need someone <laughs> who can, can smile in the face of his chaos and just run with it. And that's what we have found. And I've had a lot of support over the years in this role and never, never short of Katie Yergin quitting her COO role and just becoming my full time nanny. Nobody has ever come close to to this. And man, it's just been an absolute tremendous experience. What's yeah. special about y'all's vetting, do you feel like? Because we, my concern, that turnover concern, we, we've had one out of 12. Right. And I don't know if something bad happened to the guy, to be honest with you. Like, it could have been anything. You know, it could, it could have been anything. But it doesn't matter. But I know a lot of people I talk to, I'm like, you need to talk to my guy, Scott. Because every couple of weeks, they're replacing a person. Yeah. The, yeah, there's a lot of turnover in hires. So first of all, an executive assistant is such an under, underutilized role. So this is a really unique timing because my executive assistant, Chloe, as I started to kind of move into this, this higher VP business and really kind of ramp it up. Cause I was doing it by myself for a while. I hired Chloe as an executive assistant and I went through this process that I, I just inherently knew because I had hired and managed and, and employed golly over 20 uh, VAs to that point. So with her, I brought her in as my executive assistant and I went through this process in which within a month or two months, she knew every aspect of my business. She knew about me. She, she knew how I functioned. She knew where I needed help and it was intuition, but there's a lot of other elements and I'll talk about that, but I I would love to tell this story and you know, this Chloe continued to take on more and more and show more and more interest in our business and my business. And she became an entrepreneur. Yeah. She became a part of the business and coming to me with ideas and then jumping out and starting to talk with clients and then uh, taking on more and more roles. And we built this out where every time she, she would build SOPs and learn and do things and start taking things off of my plate. And every time she came to me as, and seemed a little stressed and say, where are you at with like your workload? And as soon as she got a little full, all right, take the SOPs that you would rather get rid of. Let's hire for that position. She yep. did the hiring and now we're like, I hired three people yesterday. So all that to say that Chloe last week was promoted from my executive assistant to my director of operations for the entire company. Yeah, it's awesome. Huge upgrade. So I just made an offer for my EA last night, a new one. I'm going to document the process I go to like in depth because other business owners need to use this because when you get a duplication of yourself, you know what that means? It means freedom. Yep. It means you can go out of town or go to a mastermind or go hang out with people for a couple of days and nothing misses a beat because that person is there. So one, I have a degree in psychology and I've, I've been in love with behavioral psychology for years. So all of that plays a really nice role in locating people. I've, I've yeah. had 
you know, data backed in information. I also am a really good, I believe, reader of character and I've been able to kind of like move this over. And I also understand the integrator vision role, visionary role, as well as different skill sets that relate to how someone's going to perform in a, in a, in a job. And so when I talk to somebody, I'm like, do you need you or do you need the opposite of you? Yeah. You kind of yeah. needed the opposite of you. You're, you're big time visionary and you needed an integrator to take those ideas, keep you on track, do things for you and then run with the ball. Right. Yep. Yep. And so we, we use that. We worked with a, an amazing human, Brian Alexander, who um, you may or may not know, but he's He's like a hiring genius and worked with him and developed a profile. We took all of our executive assistants that are crushing it and created a profile. Yeah, and dude. we have an assessment that they actually go through. We get a letter grade for how they're going to perform as an executive assistant and we're knocking it out of the park. Yeah, and awesome. so we have these uh, multiple pieces of data as well as just the, exp you know, doing the reps. I mean, no, no leaf is unturned. Like what kind of hours, how much availability on the weekends do you need? What kind of... Like, you know, there's a limitation for mothers being executive assistants. There's a limitation for, uh, you know, single people, yeah. old, young, all of those factors are taken into play. So it's a, it's, it's become a science and also there's a feel to it where we are just really, really good at what we do. That's awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. We, <laughs> so I got a message. We were in Dallas for a couple of days, some APEC stuff for the, the quarterly mm -hmm. meetup. My team was there Saturday. We did our team JW quarterly meetup. We always try to tag it. We build all my top level leaders are in apex. And so when they come out for their quarterly, we always add a day for us to be together and catch up. We have some fun. We had some real fun this weekend. I went and got that done. Oh, so, serious. Uh, <laughs> wow. I was like, I'm going to get my first tattoo. The guy's like, this is your first tattoo. I was like, yeah, let's do it. And he's like, holy shit. Okay. So, <laughs> but so we went in, Katie got one, same thing. She got LND on her foot. Uh, nice. Leave no doubt. And then uh, we ran out of time because I took up like the entire afternoon with the guy. I had no clue. I thought they would knock it out like 45 minutes. Yeah. I, had, I didn't understand the process of that, uh, but I do now. And so I get it, but we always do something fun. And then, you know, it's also we're diving in. What do we need to do better? Where are our errors? And we're, we're consistently kind of self auditing. Mm -hmm. And then we save this quarterly trip to look at, okay, these are the things we've been discussing. These are the things we're not happy with. What are we actually going to change and how are we going to implement? So it's always great for us to be together. And I got a message from Nika on Saturday and she's off. It's not working hours or whatever. And I was like, girl, what are you doing? You know, I, I got it. I'm handling it. She goes, oh, no, it's fine. I'm just up playing Fortnite with my son and doing a little bit of stuff. <laughs> I'm like, okay, yeah. I, I appreciate that, you know, because she, in a time where she does not need to be thinking about me, worried about me, she saw something come through and she was just letting me know she was taking care of it. Yeah. The feeling that gives is undescribable. Yep. It's, we stopped our meeting to talk about it. And yeah. I'm like, guys, this is, this is huge. And she's <laughs> wonderful with SOPs. Mm -hmm. building them out and, and really figuring out what I want and then dialing it in. And so my teams, they, all of my locations, they run a little differently from each other. And one of the big things, I guess, at this quarterly meetup was talking about KPIs and SOPs. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we really need to do that. I said, well, what you need to do is schedule a time with Nika and walk through what you want. She will build that thing out for you. It's no problem. Like make use of her. And that's a skill set that she has and a gift and, and let her run with that. So it, it's just been phenomenal how we have been able to implement and really the trajectory of our growth and how my team looks over the next two to five years is so different than I thought. So I, uh, I was in that room with your team. You know that they are amazing. Thank they you. are absolutely amazing. And it's, it's like the highlight <laughs> of my, of every quarterly is to go, go say hi to him. I probably bug him a little bit, but, um, no, yeah, yeah. The, uh, the culture is incredible. And I've, I've had the, the, 
privilege of doing dinner with you and your team, which was an absolute amazing time. And the thing that one thing is we, we love you guys as a client. And here's why is because when you take on a new uh, VP, when you take on someone to your team, you aren't taking on someone overseas in you guys' brains. You're taking on a human just like every single other person. Yeah. They're understanding your culture. They're understanding that you guys are sold out to make sure that they're responsible and, and provided for and successful in what they do as long as they're doing what they're supposed to do. Yeah. I get messages from your, your team all the time. It's, it's ridiculous. They are, they are sold out to you guys because you're sold out to them. Oh, and we've seen this happen over and over again with, with folks that bring them in, they start integrating them into their business. They, they are their meetings. They introduce them to their entire team. They take them at, in as a team member. And we're talking about uh, good, the difference between good performance and supreme performance is that I am a part of something much bigger yeah. because in that culture, there's a, and in this line, this freelance line of work in the Philippines, it's a fear-based line of work. Yeah. You have some freedom, but the thing is, is that you, uh, can be let go at any moment, right? Any right. moment. And so what do they do? They find multiple jobs. And so all these nightmares that you hear about, the answer is yes, those exist because there's a lot of, there is a lot of reasons and we do everything to mitigate those risks and those things from happening. I mean, we are very proactive about teaching about culture and how to serve your client and not be fear based. Like, well, big part of our, our training is uh, like working through fear yeah, and, and talking about how we are in this with you. And so when they see Josh and they see Katie and they see the, the entire team and they talk with you, they're like, okay, I don't have to be constantly looking for another job because that's what they do. They apply to every job they can nonstop. Like I would say probably 10 hours a week is devoted to applying for jobs. Wow. So when we get a client that actually like makes them understand that they're in it to win it with them, they give that whole role up in their life. They, they, I still have to work through the fear, but they're, they are now sold out and giving all their attention to the, the one client yeah. instead of bringing on these little clients just in case so that they have this backup plan. Yeah. And you know, I think that gives us some leverage too. I tell everybody that comes on, look, if you come on and it's it's a bad placement. We have clients that aren't good at doing this. It's a bad placement. They change their business. They change their mind and you lose your job, but you are a stellar individual who put out, puts out a hundred percent. We're going to find you somewhere to work. We're going to give you the best referral ever. We have, you know, tons of job opportunities coming through. So we also provide that level of, I can breathe. Yep. I'm going to be taken care of. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's just really insanely cool to use you guys as a, as an exemplar, exemplar, I can't say the word. Uh, I use you as the pinnacle. I, I tell everybody about how you guys treat the team yeah, because that lays a foundation for this is what works. And yeah. so it's been, a, it's been an honor. And, um, I, I don't want, I don't say that just to lift you up. I say that for listeners who want to engage in this. This yeah. is the, this is the way, this is the way that you see long-term success. Well, and I appreciate that. And cause, cause again, a fear of mine was how do, and I, I even shared this with you fourth quarter. I said, man, going in the next year, which is now where we're at, I said, we've got to change some stuff because the feedback I was getting from you was, man, your team really loves y'all. They really appreciate y'all. They respect you. They appreciate how inclusive you are of them. They don't feel like they're just out somewhere alone. Um, whereas from my vantage point, I felt very much we were not doing a good job <laughs> of, of inclusiveness. And so, you know, we've changed up kind of our our meeting schedules, bringing everyone in together and, and different stuff like that. But but one thing I would say to listeners who are considering bringing on a virtual hire, and I, I guess to clarify that too, guys, like virtual, right? Virtual, a lot of times virtual is not real. These are very much real people. They're just not physically in your office, okay? Like it's, so I always kind of hate when I say this virtual role, but it, it is what it is, you know, but it, a cup in the beginning, we didn't necessarily have a full-time need, but we still hired full-time to Scott's point. My concern was I don't want some, I don't want any of my staff, whether they're here in the States, they're in the Philippines, whatever. I don't want any of our team. I don't share well. I don't play well yeah. with others, you know, and even if I've got 20 hours of work for you, I'm hiring you full-time because I want your focus and sure you might win for a while. Right. I have no problem with that, but there's going to be plenty of weeks where I need more. 
And when it's weeks where I need less, hey, cool, go enjoy your family, go, you know, whatever's going on. But when I when I need more, you're showing up and you're you're getting the project done where we're working together. And so to your point, I didn't want them competing. I didn't want them worrying about, oh man, yeah, this is, you know, 20 hours a week, but I, I've got 40 hour week responsibilities, you know? And so let's get them committed to us. We're going to be committed to them. And then once we made that first hire, it opened the floodgates of our mind of what could we use this staffing for? It's been out of control. I mean, we literally built a second business last year, Scott. That, know. <laughs> you know, off of your ability to produce staff for me, the skill sets I needed, we were able to launch an, enti- launch an entirely different company. And it, it's if you're sitting there thinking, what on earth would I use a, a virtual assistant for you? you, I cannot challenge you enough if you're listening today to have the conversation with a Scott, with Scott or someone, you know, who, it, who does what Scott does. There's a lot of great companies. Scott, I know a lot of people who do this really, really well. Scott yeah. just happens to be my guy and does it exceptionally well. But you, it'll blow your mind what they can open up to you that is a possibility. And don't think of it as, what do I need an assistant for? What do I need an assistant for? What do I need an assistant for? What are you spending time on that a professional can come in and take on that creates a delta for you in your schedule? How much further can you grow? How much? Maybe you don't grow at all. Maybe your business is at a point where you can just have stuff removed from you, replacing yourself, like Scott said a little bit ago. And now you've got more time with the family. You've got more time on a passion project. You've got more time on a hobby. You've got more time to do absolutely nothing. And and I think people underestimate that and the importance of the nothing. That's okay. It is okay. Entrepreneurs will tend to fill any empty space they get, right? And so that's that's a danger, of course. And I, I learned that the hard way. And uh, I see it differently. And to your point, when you hire someone full-time, and my fir- very first VA, I didn't even know if I had five hours of work for her a week, but I hired her full-time salary. I yeah. was like, I'm just going all in. And within three months, I had three full-time VAs. Once you kind of get a hold of what's possible and you get that first thing offloaded and it goes successfully. And then you, you kind of rinse and repeat. And as I'm going through the day, I'm like, why am I doing this last month? Last month, Chloe's like, why are you still doing this part of the business? And I had to ask myself, well, I don't know. That's a complete waste of my time. Yeah. <laughs> and we, I sat down, I created eight Loom videos that were then generated into SOPs, and now the stuff just happens. Yeah. And so what happens is once you kind of get a, a vision or a picture for it, you start to understand that process and 15 hours can turn into 30 hours, can turn into 40 hours, can turn into two VAs. If that's where your, you know, your business is at yeah. very, very quickly. It's more of a mindset and a, and, and a kind of pr- you're programmed. I was programmed to do everything myself, Right. And, and so there is some reprogramming that happens. I mean, even last month, like I said, eight new SOPs, I'd been doing it myself forever. And here I am the pro at this. Yeah, right. Right. So it's a, it's an ongoing process, but it, it definitely is the answer to freedom. So when I want to go to Montana with my wife to see my son or go skiing or whatever it is, I can go. Yep. It's, it's literally that simple. Hey, I'm leaving. Um, let's clear my schedule and rebook everything. If there's anything on there and I'm out of here. Yeah. <laughs> That's that, pretty awesome. That's awesome. No, that's great. And that's by design. Right. And people don't understand that that exists. I've never, in the last year, short of a very small handful of people, I have never had a team more hardworking, more forward thinking than this team that we brought in through you. It It is wild. They're, they're mm-hmm. And they're empowered to tell us how things could be different to be better. You know, Nika comes in, she's like, hey, Josh, um, and I'm not an easy person to tell stuff to, right? People aren't just going to like tell me like, hey, man, you, you're you doing this wrong, blah, 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 blah. You know, whatever reason, people don't have an easy time doing that. And so Nika's on like day two, day three. She goes, I see you communicate with this team over here, this team over there, this team in Messenger, this team, blah, 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 this over here. You got these group chats, these group texts, all those things. I said, yeah. She goes, you can't do that. And I'm just (laughs) sitting there like, excuse me. And she goes, you can't do that. I'm going to put on the calendar in two days and I'm going to show you the better way. 
And I said, no problem. So she put it on the calendar. And two days later, we jump in. We're 10 minutes into a 30 minute demo. And I said, all right, I set up, I put in, I paid. She goes, well, no, there's a trial period for the software. I said, screw it. I already paid for it. You build it, build it out and set it up. And it was 24 hours later, we had everybody switched and I'm no longer bouncing between social media and you know all this stuff. Basically what she did was she took my software that we use on our sales side. And there's, there's a version or a, a similar type software that we're using internally now that's been around forever. I just didn't know what, what I mean, every, people are going to laugh at me when I say the name of it. Cause everyone's like, yeah, Josh Slack exists. And yeah. you know, yeah. And it's, it's been a, it's been an absolute game changer. Yeah. Saving well, so people, much time. People don't under, don't even think about the amount of time hopping from a platform to platform to platform is because they're, they're constant distractions. So when you have one platform, like you moving everything to Slack, now you can move, remove all the other distractions. Like those aren't places you're going to like go to Slack sitting over there. And now it's a, a conscientious check-in. Yep. Everything's in one place. And it's really hard to quantify how much time that takes from you. But I would guess it's hours a week that it saves you. Oh, for sure. Because here's the thing. Yeah. Someone sends me something on Messenger on Facebook. So now I'm on Facebook and something else catches my eye. And now I'm just going, and, and my brain's always working that way. Like it's been, I've been so excited. I noticed about five minutes into our call, your backdrop matches the backdrop of the podcast here. It's like the, the mountains, like the elevation right. changes and the grids. And I'm like, Oh, this is so sick that Scott's backdrop. I don't know if you can see it on your end. Um, but the framing matches up with your backdrop. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. So now my brain would run with that for like 20 <laughs> minutes, right? So this is why I had to get off of, you know, Facebook and, and Instagram and all these other apps. And the thing that's funny, though, is I could see it from a productivity standpoint for my sales team. So when we built our software, I built one that integrated everything mm -hmm. into one place. Sales team, super efficient. They don't have to be all over the place talking to all these different lead sources but I couldn't see it enough to build it for me in a platform that would help me with time. And it took yeah. that outside set of eyes to be confident enough to say, Hey Josh, we're not going to do that anymore. That's not good for you. And that was a trust building piece for me because not only did she call me out on it, but she replaced it with something that's making my life way better. And that's how you build trust quick. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've got a lot of stories like that. And it's, it's just always been exciting. My very first VA just a couple of weeks in sent me, I sent her a video, a loom video on how to do something. And she was to create an SOP. And she said, here's the SOP, Scott, I created an alternate one. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> She's like, I think this is a better way to do it. It's faster and it's cheaper. I look it over. I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And so what, what we learn really quickly is that another person who is solely focused on helping you strategize, implement things that are more efficient, and, and they're going to bring different ideas because their eyes are open for them. Yep. Right. And by the way, that was a big squirrel because I'm seeing the topography on your framing and the topography on my backdrop. <laughs> I I, when I first got on this call, here's a big squirrel moment. When I first got on this call, I'm like, how in the world did they integrate my backdrop oh, yeah. with their background? I thought it was some crazy AI thing. Yeah, it is. It absolutely is. It's Logan, some <laughs> AI thing he's created. Uh, we'll be able to do it with all of our future guests. Um, right. Logan, make that happen. <laughs> It's really cool. I love the topography lines. So, um, yeah. So anyway. you mentioned Scott, you know, when we first started talking like a year ago, there's kind of like that immediate connection and we just really vibed real well. All right. We have kids similar age, mm -hmm. you know, values I, I, I believe are very much in alignment and it, it was kind of cool. Cause you were in this phase where your son was getting ready to, to go to Montana Yep. You know, by himself and, and work and, you know, Logan was getting ready to graduate and he's going to come work for us. And so we we're both in this transition period. And it's I just want to say that it's so cool to see because I know your son's doing awesome. We've talked about this and and what he's doing. I know you're, you guys, you and Kim are so proud of of what he's doing and 
um, it's been so cool to see Logan like starting to like fit in here and, mm-hmm. and progress and contribute and, and grow with the company. It's it's neat because it's a different phase than we've been in before, right? right. Um, and that was something that was really special to me to get to share with you. When we spoke early on, it wasn't just business. It was family. It was kids. It was dad stuff. And I, I think that's the part where for me, it's that human connection that came out of the, the weirdest of places for me. I didn't expect that. I thought we were going to jump on talk. You're going to, I'm going to see if it's a good fit to do some podcast production stuff, not knowing what it would, sure. would lead to, to a, to a friendship. I mean, we talk often and, and connect and it's, it, it's, it's just been something great. Talk a little bit about Kim and the boys and the family and stuff. Oh man, that's, that's my thing. Uh, my oldest Bryson that you spoke to is 19 turning 20 soon. He's up in Montana working, uh, you know, just getting his hands dirty, really, really, really dirty hands. Uh, he's living on a huge property in a double wide with other workers. It's, it's kind of like that, you know, in Yellowstone where you're living in a, the bunk it, house. I don't know what they call bunk house or whatever. Um, but he, he's doing really well. He's, he's learning his way and he wanted to be, he, he, he started his year after college working with me and I was in this massive transition and it was just, I didn't even know how to tell him what to do because I didn't know what I was doing. Right. Yeah, so yeah. the timing wasn't great. And he's like, Hey, I'm going to go do this thing. He has a, a profitable TikTok channel and um, merch brand. He, t- he texted me the other day. He's like, I made 400 bucks off of TikTok just in the last like four hours. <laughs> I was like, awesome. what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so he's, he's pursuing that and working and Corbin is 15 turning 16, like in a week. And he lives here, of course, but and my wife and I've been married 27 years. July will be 28. We, we've been together like 35 yeah. and um, 34. And I don't know, you know, it's my desire. I think it's it, you and you and your, your wife too. It's my desire for other people to have what I have. Mm-hmm. And it, it's a really hard thing to, to, look at somebody and, and you want to shake them. I'm sure you feel this. You want to shake them like business owners. Cause I've been through the ringer of like working nonstop and not paying attention to family. I went through this big process. It's a whole story, but my life is focused on, uh, God is first, my wife, then my boys, then the rest of the family. I, mean, I literally have it this granular and yeah. then it goes into my fitness and then, uh, finances through work. And I live my, my every day that way. And I believe that our success as parents revolves around our success as a couple. Yeah. And that is the pinnacle of how I prepare my boys is that if I love my wife and we work are constantly working on our relationship, they will, they will thrive because they will do the same thing. Yeah. And another thing I'm incredibly passionate about is really sharing with them. And I've done this for probably the last five years, every single failure, because failure is what's led me to where I am today. Yeah. And in, unless we learn to embrace failure as a stepping stone, we're going to just be stuck all our lives. So I really believe they're on a, an incredible trajectory as I am sure Logan is because that's, you know, that's something that took me many, many, many years to, um, to kind of embrace. So I enjoy working. I'm 50 years old. I have no finish line. Yeah. I don't see an end. I'm sure, I'm sure you're kind of wired the same way. Sure. I'll, I'll, um, I'll execute at different levels and I'll, I'll have other people in place so that I can have those time freedoms and those, those, you know, trips that aren't planned to another, another continent or another uh, state or whatever it might be. But life is just really good. So yeah. thanks for asking. Yeah. That's awesome. Um, it, that's really awesome. And I, <laughs> it's funny. I told Devin, she asked this maybe two years ago. She's like, cause the plan always was the kids will graduate. We're going to go live in the mountains and chill and uh, not necessarily be done working, but like that was the plan. And now we get closer to that. And I've never felt more energized, invigorated. Like I'm just getting started than I do now today. And I don't know if Logan coming in and like getting in the mix is, has something to do with that. I don't know if, because I see his interest as like, oh man, this could open up some other opportunities for us. So that's new and exciting for the entrepreneurial part of my mind. Mm -hmm. 
And, um, you know, I think it was, I think it was Andy Frisella a couple of years ago said something that really stuck with me. And he said, look, true entrepreneurs don't retire. We just die. And that's okay. Because while it may, to your point, look like something different, like in 20 years from now, winning to me is every day. Well, not just 20 years from now, shit, a month from now today, I want to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Mm -hmm. And if there's things I need to do, if I'm not able to do that, my singular focus is figuring out how can I do that? You know? And so it's, I'm never going to be done. The involvement piece is just going to be different. I'm always going to want to be involved. I feel like I will drop dead. If I stop all the crazy stuff that goes on in my head, if I just turn it off, I feel like that would just kill me. That would be it. And that doesn't mean I need to be on my laptop 20 hours a day. That's not what I'm saying. I want to build something that allows me to drop everything and go be with Logan and his kids just because we want to. Not because they need me, not because we have to, but because I want to. Devin wants to go someplace. Yeah, done. Let's do it tomorrow. Let's let's go. And if we haven't built that, we're not close to building that or the ability for others in our organization to do things like that. We haven't really built anything at all, in, in my opinion. You know, I just built a job. And I yeah. love working. I love working. I don't have a lot of other hobbies. I don't have like, but I don't think of it as working. It's, it's like playing a big ass game in my mind. And mm -hmm. some days I win, some days I lose. We were talking about, you're talking about your relationship with your wife and, and that kind of that modeling and wanting people to have it. A couple of weeks ago, I was not at my best. I was not the best husband, probably not the best dad this day. And um, I was definitely out of character and I was on one and I was very upset about it. I failed. I failed. I took an L that day. And I asked Logan about it. And Logan's like, you're just being childish. I don't even know what you're doing. And <laughs> I'm like, shit. Okay. Yeah. You're probably right. And it, there was no drama behind it. He's not freaking out thinking mommy and daddy are getting divorced. Not like, he's just like, you're being a child, figure it out. I'm like, Hey, thanks child. I appreciate it. Yeah, you that. raised a good one. Yeah. You know, it's, <laughs> it's like, like, let's just recognize dad is flawed and mm -hmm. you know, we get more W's than we take L's, but that growth piece is so important and it, in learning from it. And what I learned from it was, you know, I was gone. I wasn't a great husband. I wasn't a great dad. Then I ended up going out of town for five days. And I hated it. it. It like freaking just kicked me in the gut. I get back and I have a busy week planned here. I didn't come in for two days. I just stayed at home with Devin. And she <laughs> ended up getting sick and flu and stuff. She's feeling better. But I was like, hey, what is that going to show if I get back after not being great? And now I'm just like work is more important. It's not. Whether we do anything or not, like I'm around. This is the priority. And let me get my shit together. And it, and most people won't do that or they're not allowed, they, they're not allowed to do that or think they can't do that. And I also told my children, Hey, sorry, I screwed up. I sucked. I'm gonna work harder to be the guy who, you know, isn't that person, you know, and they, they everything's fine and good. It was nothing crazy. I was just being an asshole. <laughs> the it, right, well, good job good job for being an asshole uh <laughs> yeah, so no. <laughs> i i i went away for a week as well i live close but i still rented a house in plano it was there for an entire week with a group of people that i lead as well as the apex thing i come home saturday and i'm tired and i decided to make bacon and instead of putting the container to drain the bacon uh, grease into um down i held it and I tipped the pan over my hand and bo literally poured boiling bacon fat over my fingers. Like this. So when, when we get too deep into things, right, our brain just goes to mush and we act like assholes yep. or we burn our, you know, you can see my fingers. Yeah, they look good. <laughs> um, and so we're, we're not always at our best, but these are lessons. This is what I was talking about earlier. Yep. These are lessons. And I see so many business owners taking pride in the hustle mentality. Mm. I do everything without me, everything falls apart. And you and I are at a place in our business and our lives and our kids that we realize that we can't be that one thing that holds everything together. We have to place people around us. And I've just been really fortunate. I have 19, 20, 22 full-time uh, Filipino virtual professionals working for me, running yeah. my businesses right now. That's right? Awesome. So I put structures and people in place 
but I had to work on my identity first because my identity used to be as a business owner. That's yep. what I, what I found pride in. Now I find pride on being a kick-ass husband and father. Yeah. And, um, and so I think that's kind of what you're alluding to is I can continue working because it's not my identity, but it, but it's, it's a tool that allows my brain to, I love my brain always is always working. Yeah. And so it's just, it's just different from, for entrepreneurs. And it's really exciting to find other people that are wired the same way and just get it. And I think you and I, that first time we met, I realized you were operating at that same level of understanding what's important in life. Yeah. But we're still going to get out there and make, make incredible businesses. Right. Yeah. And the thing that's funny and I tell people often, you know, you and Kim, I think you said been together 36 years, 37 years total, something like that. Yeah. yeah. You know, Devin and I were coming up on 30 years together and, um, you know, we started dating in high school and same. it's just, same. we've grown up together and mm -hmm. God bless her. <laughs> it's, I know. Right. It, I think, the confidence comes in it not having to be that hustle lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I work on my businesses, try to grow my businesses, investing in people, I've invest a lot in myself because I got a lot of work to do on me still to create opportunities, to create influence, to fail and know that it won't cost me everything. Because the only true things that matter to me Devin, my kids, you know, like beyond like now, yes, my, my companies matter to me. My yeah. employees matter to me a lot, but, and I think they know that I know they know that, but the gap between my wife and kids and my company and my staff isn't even close. It's huge. And I know if it's all gone tomorrow, my wife and kids are still gonna be excited to see me when I get home. Exactly. They're like your dog. Yeah. They're like my dog. <laughs> they're like my dog. And but they don't shed. It's amazing. And so, <laughs> you know, but it, it, it creates this fearlessness in us, at mm -hmm. least for me, where it's like, man, I'm willing to try something new. I'm willing to be maybe more vulnerable than I was when I was in my twenties and thirties, because I thought I had to be a certain way. I thought this persona had to represent. Whereas it's like, I, because I was, it was almost like you're trying to sell yourself on something else that is so little of importance. And I want to win. I want to be successful. I like nice stuff. I want to do nice things. I want to create great experiences for my family and friends. Of course I do. But that's bonus. That's bonus. I've already won. You can't take away what, I mean, I've won in the biggest way with my wife and my kids. Mm -hmm. I can't and not sorry to toot your horn, Logan, like you're here with us, but like, I am like, it's just, I know. Cause I know on my worst days because he's been here on my worst days. It's all good. Dad. Love you. We're cool. Still sticking around. It's fine. Yeah. yeah. He could have bounced. So I must not have done that bad. He wants to come deal with me every day at work. So it's just, it, it, I'm just, it, I love when people can hear about stories like yours and mine that it's, Cause dude, it's rare. Yeah. It's rare, particularly in our space and circles we run in to have those long relationships. It's rare. It's like you're a freaking unicorn because it's hard. It is. It's, it's really hard, but you know, the, the main thing's got to be the main thing always. always. And that's what gets out of alignment. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Scott, how, um, I know there's gonna be a lot of people thinking about if this virtual professional thing could be a fit for them or, and I know you'd be open to having conversations to help people figure out when it might be the, the right time, right. What type of triggers are hitting that could try, kind of be a, a trigger that, Oh, I need to be, be looking at this. What's the best way for people to connect with you? People that want to learn more about what you guys do. So because of the brand re you know, the rebranding our website is in development by an amazing VP right now, but Facebook, Instagram, Scott Ramage okay. is best. Cool. Two T's and two M's and Ramage and just shoot me a message. And you know, the one thing that I am incredibly passionate about when I do a sales call, I'm going to find out where you're at, what you're doing. You don't need to come with the answers. I think that's a really important thing to understand is I'm coming to have a conversation with you to unearth some possibilities and show you what 
is probably the, the, the first path of movement. A lot of people come to me and they're like, I have no clue. Yeah. And I just ask questions and find out, okay, well, wow. Like you're spend, do you understand the amount of energy you're spending on this thing? These things that if they were taken away from you, you could have a massive return on investment in your time. Yeah. Like, what do you like doing? Like when I ask myself that question, I love talking to people like you. Yeah. So then everything in my being in my business is how do I get rid of everything else with excellence and have more time to talk to people. So I've created a business in which that's my job right now. Yeah. I get to talk to people who are maybe interested or don't even know if they're interested. So when you get on a call with me, don't come to be sold, come to learn yep. and walk away with, oh, this is right for me or no, it's not. And I'll be the first to tell you if it's not yeah. and because it does happen. But uh, I, I would love to talk with anybody who has questions about it. That's cool. We'll, we'll tag yeah. all your stuff in the Thanks. in the show notes and stuff. And man, I just, I, I can't believe it took us this long to get this done. I appreciate you so much. I should have asked a lot sooner. Um, you know, well, I wanted to fly and do it in person because I would have just loved to have some time with you guys. Well, anytime, so. <laughs> anytime, anytime. And, and we, we, we could jump into a lot of different things. We could skip the whole working piece and just go into dad talk. Oh, and yeah. And husband talks, <laughs> which we probably should at some point. Um, again, right I know on. I really enjoyed diving into that on, on your show last year. And so, yeah, it was fun. Um, yeah, man, I just I appreciate the heck out of you and your team. Um, respect you so, so much and just honored that you took the time this morning to, to jump on with us with your, your crazy schedule. So, you know, be blessed Likewise. my friend, so much you love too. from team JW team. And, um, I can't wait to catch up with you soon. All right, fellas. Thank you so much. It's All been right. an honor. Take it easy. 